This new MacBook Pro exists for a few key reasons. Number one, Apple sells a lot of 13 inch MacBook Pro machines. I kind of view it like fleet vehicles in the automotive industry. Number two, the previous 13 inch MacBook Pro is approaching two years old in November and was due for a refresh. Number three, this is Apple's entry level Pro MacBook and that holds weight for some reason, that name Pro. And at 1299, its base configuration is $700 cheaper than the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. And then finally, R&D and manufacturing costs are gonna be a lot lower since this design is the exact same as used previously. There could be other factors behind the scenes that Apple isn't divulging, but the fact of the matter is, is that Apple sells a lot of 13 inch MacBook Pro computers. I look at the MacBook Pro, like I said, similarly to how I look at fleet vehicles. They are there to do a job, but they don't bring a lot of added bells and whistles to the table. The M2 MacBook Pro does the job, features a new engine, so to speak, with a higher performance than its predecessor, but it's not all that exciting and it saves all the fancy stuff. The XDR display, MagSafe, SD card slot, extra Thunderbolt port, HDMI port for its bigger siblings. Now, if you need a new MacBook, then the 2022 MacBook Pro is among the cheapest that you can buy brand new. It also comes with M2 Apple Silicon that should last plenty of generations of software updates going into the future. The chassis on this MacBook Pro, both inside and outside, is indistinguishable from its predecessor. It features the same I.O., including two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports located on the left side of the machine and uses the same 3.5mm headphone jack on the right side. The screen is also identical to the previous model. It features the same 13.3 inch IPS display with the 2560 by 1600 native resolution, along with some other familiar display specs like 500 nits of brightness, wide color support, true tone for accurate white balance and ambient light. You get the deal. The 2022 MacBook Pro also ensures that the controversial touch bar remains available on a brand new Apple laptop for at least one more generation. Recently, I tweeted out how I actually kind of missed the touch bar. It's sort of weird, but the response was very interesting. A lot of you guys actually missed the touch bar as well. It just needed to be tweaked and Apple shouldn't have eliminated the physical function keys. They should coexist at the same time. But with all that being said, let's not get it twisted. The 13 inch MacBook Pro is still a beautifully designed laptop and in most cases it puts PC designs to shame. The most important 2022 MacBook Pro feature is easily the Apple M2 chip, which makes its worldwide debut in this machine. The M2 is the follow-up to the venerable M1 chip, the first such in-house design chip for Macs, and it was an utter game-changer performance-wise when compared to Intel chips. The M2 builds on the M1 in several key ways. The M2 uses the same 5 nanometer process, but features a noteworthy increase in transistors going from 16 million on the M1 to 20 million on the M2, and the M2 features an 8-core CPU paired with a 10-core core GPU that's two additional GPU cores than its predecessor. The 16 core neural engine is also now more capable than before. The upgraded neural engine can now perform 15.8 trillion operations per second, which is a sizable step above the 11 trillion ops from the two year ago model. And then finally, the M2 MacBook Pro can be configured with up to 40% more unified memory than before with users presented with an 8, 16, and a new 24 gigabyte built to order option, which is great. Having eight gigabytes of extra memory headroom will make a difference for things like video video workflows, 3D rendering, virtualization, etc. One of the biggest weaknesses of the 13-inch MacBook Pro only affects the base model with 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. As discovered by Max Tech, Apple is using a single 256 gigabyte NAND module in its base MacBook Pro instead of two 128 gigabyte modules in parallel like it did in the M1 powered base machine. This change results in slower SSD speeds than the previous 13-inch base model MacBook Pro. On one hand, that is a problem for sure, like absolutely, because the Mac MacBook Pro should at least be as fast as its predecessor across the board, right? In terms of SSD speed for the base 1299 configuration with 256 gigabytes of storage, that is not the case and that is for sure a disappointment. Now, of course, one could also make the argument that those who are concerned with the speed of the SSD wouldn't be opting for the base configuration anyway. And you know, I agree with that to an extent. The audience for this baseline MacBook Pro is generally not the same audience that cares about things like SSD performance beyond the fact of course, that it be fast enough to do basic tasks competently, such as launching apps. However, as others have said, I think this means that Apple should have simply set the new baseline at 512 gigabytes if doing otherwise yields performance that is demonstrably slower than its predecessor, as is the case with this base model MacBook Pro. 
at $1299 for the base model, the 13-inch MacBook Pro is easily the most affordable brand new MacBook Pro that you can purchase today. The higher-end 14-inch model starts at $1999, a $700 increase over the baseline 13-inch version. Granted, it's not exactly apples to apples, but in terms of value when compared to the 14-inch model, there is a substantial amount of money to be saved with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now, if you're coming from an Intel MacBook, then the M2 MacBook Pro, like its predecessor, will blow you away. The performance and battery life run circles around MacBook Pro models with Intel chips. However, when compared to the previous M1 MacBook Pro, value is certainly limited. For starters, you get a slower SSD in the base model, and outside of the M2 performance increases and build-to-order memory upgrade, it's more or less the exact same machine design-wise and feature-wise. Now, if your workflow can benefit from the performance increases of the M2, then that's one thing, but generally speaking, the people who are looking for those sort of increases are probably looking at some of the higher-end, higher-spec machines like the 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pro, or they're just waiting for the M2 variants of those machines. With these things in mind, I'd say that the 2022 MacBook Pro provides a very wide range of value propositions for prospective buyers. But there's something else, another machine that you should definitely consider before buying this MacBook Pro, and let's talk about that right now. The 2022 MacBook Pro is about as vanilla as it gets when it comes to Apple laptops. If I were looking to upgrade to the latest Apple Silicon, I'd wait instead for the M2 powered MacBook Air refresh that's scheduled to come available later this month. Despite being rated for two hours less battery life than the MacBook Pro, I think the upcoming MacBook Air is hands down the better computer for the majority of users at this price tier. You get all the following advantages over the MacBook Pro. You get a brand new thinner design, a slightly larger 13 0.6 inch liquid retina display, much thinner bezels, a lighter chassis, a silent fanless design, new exciting color options like Starlight and Midnight, MagSafe 3 support, a 1080p FaceTime HD camera, full-size function keys, no touch bar for those that hate it, and all this for $100 less than the base model MacBook Pro. To me, that seems like a no-brainer. Now, there are some advantages of the MacBook Pro. Number one, there's no notch, so if you prefer a traditional display, it's a little bit smaller, but you don't have to deal with the notch. And then there's active cooling. So it's going to be a little louder, but you're going to have less throttling. So if you're really pushing this machine, then the MacBook Pro will, in theory, perform better. And the MacBook Pro comes bundled with a 67 watt USB-C power adapter versus the 30 watt adapter that comes with the base model MacBook Air. And as mentioned, battery life is 20 hours for the MacBook Pro versus 18 hours for the MacBook Air. And for those that like it, the touch bar, this will probably be the last time we see a touch bar on a new MacBook. And you get stereo speakers with high dynamic range and a studio quality 3 mic array. But in my opinion, none of these advantages add up to make the MacBook Pro a better machine than the MacBook Air. But if you really value the touch bar or you value battery life over anything else, then those are areas you might possibly consider when making a decision. Despite having not yet tested the MacBook Air, I think the decision is pretty clear. If you're looking to upgrade to the M2, most users should skip the MacBook Pro and go for the MacBook Air. What do y'all think? Let me know down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with Cellular.